Shalom. Dear beloved, to all of you who have joined me together to hear the wonderful words of the Lord. May you be blessed. May you be strengthened and encouraged by God's words. May the instructions of the living God through the Holy Spirit give you power to continue growing in his goodness. Today we are going to talk about the humility and the light of the Lord Jesus in mankind. But before we do that, let us bow our heads before the living God and pray. Father, we offer this time into your holy hands. We ask you, mighty God, that you will be with us in the center of everything we do and say, that it will be pleasant and acceptable to you. O oh God Almighty, we commit our hearts and our souls to the living word, that your word may execute its own plan, your will, Lord God, and bring forth much fruits of righteousness. We ask you, living God, that you open our ears to hear what your Holy Spirit is saying, that our hearts be tender, that our hearts be receptive, for you say in your word that you work in our hearts to will and do what is your good pleasure. Therefore, Lord, let it be so that your word does a mighty work for your glory and for your purposes, that our destinies be fulfilled. I ask you, mighty God, that you will lead us from glory to glory, from one revelation to the other, by the power of your Spirit. Lord, that your name be exalted and glorified above the heavens, and that our hearts be united with your Spirit, rejoicing, for you are a good God. Thank you, Father, for giving us these words, for giving us the revelation of your Scriptures, and giving us the grace to be together before your throne of grace. And we ask you humbly, in the glorious name of your Son, Jesus Christ. And we all say, Amen. Amen. Dear beloved, okay. Today, the Lord has given me a scriptures that speak, first of all, of the humility of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 1. On chapter 2 in the book of Philippians. And he says, If then there is any encouragement in Christ, if any consolation of love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by thinking the same way, by having the same love. By sharing the same feelings, focusing on one goal. Do nothing out of rivalry or conceit, but in humility consider others as more important than yourselves. Everyone should look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interest of others. How wonderful. There is so much wealth in these verses. And so much of the character of Christ Jesus revealed in these words. Because this is how Jesus behaved. Though he was in the form of God, he took the form of man. He found no offense of being God, but yet being humble to mere man, that the purposes of the Father may be fulfilled on the earth through him. 
So the Lord Jesus throughout his life was not, <coughs> excuse me, was not thinking for himself, for his benefit, for his glory. He knew who he is, who he was. He knew the plan of God and the purpose of God through his life. He knew and he said even with thanksgiving to the Father, thank you for giving me a body that he could offer it up for us. What a generous heart. What a generous attitude. I'm sure that was a choice. That he made the choice of considering others first and foremost. For he himself said to somebody that called him, good Lord. He says, why do you call me good? There's only one that is good. And that's the father. He never took the father's glory. He never portrayed himself better than others. He just did the will of the father. And that was an amazing ministry. In verse 5, he says, Make your own attitude that which is of Christ Jesus. See? who existing in the form of God did not consider equality with God as something to be used for his own advantage. He didn't boast. He didn't use the power that God has given him for his benefit, but he used it for the benefit of others, healing others delivering others, restoring others, encouraging them. Verse 7, instead, he emptied himself, but assuming the form of a slave, taking on the likeness of man. And when he had come as a man in his external form, he humbled himself by becoming so obedient to the point of death, even to death on the cross. So to the Lord Jesus, the most important thing was to obey the loving Heavenly Father because the Father had a plan. And he knew he would have to suffer. He knew that he had to go through pain. But he humbled himself. And he gave all in obedience to the Lord. He took the form of a slave, being God. Oh, how amazing. What a humility that is. Ah, hallelujah. The obedience to the Father was most important to the Lord Jesus. Why? Because that is what kept him in the power, in the position of authority that God has given him. Never he used it for his own advantage. In verse 9, it says, for this reason, the humility, the obedience of the Lord Jesus. For this reason, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, or Yeshua, every knee should bow of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every time you confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. How amazing, the glory of God. So the Lord Father considered the humility of the Lord Jesus, how he bowed himself to the will of God. And therefore the Father 
rewarded him with such glory and authority. Such an amazing power that those in the heaven and the earth will bow their knees before him, before that authority he has. And every time would confess that he is Lord. That is the power of the Father on the Son. And I want us to ponder at this time on the fact that in Luke 10, in the book of Luke, in chapter 10, verse 19, he says, I have given you authority to trample against the snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the powers of the enemy and nothing by any means shall ever hurt you. That is the authority God gave him over all principalities, over all governments, over all dominions, over all, all powers, over all creation. And as it is spoken in Genesis, when God the Father gave Adam and Eve the power and authority, the dominion, over all creation, of all the creatures on the earth. Brothers and sisters, I would like us to think about this. How good is the love of God? How marvelous is his mercy and grace? And how amazing that he should think of us first than himself. And that he will give unto us the power given by the Lord through the Holy Spirit that we may walk upon this earth like he did. All the glory to the Most High God who is, who was, and who is to come. Now he is the light to this world. Actually, in the book of John, chapter 1, it speaks of him being the true light who gives life to all men that comes to the world. But let's read now. Verse 12. In the book of Philippians, chapter 2. And he says, So then, my dear friends, just as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now even more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and with trembling. For it is God who is working in you, enabling you both to will and to act to his good purpose. This is one prayer that I pray continuously to the loving Father. Lord, work in my heart that I may will and do your good pleasure. Not my pleasure anymore. Help me to live for your pleasure. That is a good thing that we should ask God to, to lead us to, isn't it? Because that's all that Jesus did, the pleasure of the Father. How wonderful! The heart of the Lord Jesus was to please the Father. Verse 13, sorry, verse 15. So that you may be blameless and pure children of God who are faultless in a crooked and perverse generation among those um, among whom you shine like stars in the world. See, when we accept Christ Jesus' crucifixion and sacrifice in our lives, he comes into our lives. He becomes part of us. He walks through us. 
He works through us. He speaks through us. He loves and has mercy and tenderness through us. Dear beloved, we are his instruments, but many do not even recognize it. Therefore, let us never take part of giving glory to ourselves because the glory belongs to him and him alone. He is to be blessed above all in Jesus' name. Therefore, in this generation of darkness, because he is in us, because his spirit comes to us, we shine the light. We're no longer in darkness. We're no longer supposed to walk in darkness. If we are born again, we are no longer sinning. For the Lord and the Spirit of the Lord within us, when we are presented with the temptations of sin, He will give us a power to reject it. How wonderful! How wonderful is the Lord! So, holy, so the word encourages to hold firmly the message of life. Then I can boast on that day of Christ that I did not run in vain or labor for nothing. But even if I am poured out as a drink offering on the sacrifice and service for your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you. In the same way, you also should rejoice and share your joy with me. Well, here the apostle is speaking to the church, the Philippians, the Philippians, and he's saying that even though he gives all of himself for them, just like Christ gave all of himself for all of us, he is glad, and his desire that they will hold on the message of life, that they will not forget who gave them life, that they will not be entangled any longer with the world and the things of the world. Amen. So God is encouraging all of us to walk with Jesus. As he is the light, he tells us to walk in his light. He is the light and he is the word and the word of God is like a lamp that walks before us like a lamp into our feet so we may not stumble in darkness against the stone. He is the light for all mankind and the Lord Holy Spirit is like the rod that leads us in the pathways of righteousness. You know, sometimes you can see a shepherd if you live in, 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 the, in the land or in the wilderness, you can see sometimes a shepherd taking care of the sheep and he has a staff and he has a rod. And the staff I imagine it is like, it is the word of God that establishes us, that shows the pathway to the sheep because the shepherd is walking in front of the sheep and the sheep, even though it may be dark, they will hear the stuff of the shepherd hitting the ground and they will follow it. And the rod is the Spirit of God who convicts us of righteousness, of sin, and of judgment. Dear beloved, these scriptures are a blessing 
for us to understand that Jesus walked in humility and he shone the light upon the world. And he's calling us to walk in that humility. So let us remember to look at others' interest more than our own. That doesn't mean we will, we will forsake the things that portray to us. But let us remember that God cares for our needs. So we should care for the need of others. How do we do that? Ask God to make us mindful. How do we share his goodness and his kindness and his truth? Not by methods. Not by forms of man. But asking the Spirit of God, Lord, today I want to shine your light on somebody whom you have made ready to receive it. Lord, put me in a situation. Fill my mouth with your words that I may be an encouragement, a blessing, a strength, a joy, a smile, a comfort, a light to those that do not have it. Remember, brothers and sisters, one day the Lord said to me, I was sad. I had, I, I had a, a, a situation that made me a little bit sad. And the Lord said to me, Stella, when you go out today, just smile to everyone. I said, okay. It's not a problem to smile. To me, it's easy. So as I walked, I looked straight to the eyes of the people coming opposite in the street and I smiled. Some look at me like, huh? What's she on about? Others smiled right back. Especially those that look uh, uh, sad, that look troubled and concerned. They smile back. And the Lord said to me, after a while, see, you have given a smile to those that have none. And like that, we can give bread of life. We can give a helping hand. We can give of ourselves as the Spirit let us know. As the Spirit shows us, we can give of ourselves as Jesus gave for us. That way, we learn the ways of Jesus, of humility and shining his light in such a dark place as is now in the world. In the world, there is a perverse generation that is filled with darkness, veil after veil after veil before their eyes, that they cannot see anything good. But as the light of God shines from us, they begin to see hope. They begin to see truth. And their hearts begin to change because the word of God sets us free. So dear beloved, let us bow before the Lord and pray. From the depths of your heart, talk to God and ask him about your desire to walk in his humility, your desire to walk in his love and his light, Father, in Jesus' name we commit right now our soul, our thoughts, our hearts, our emotions into your hands. And I pray, Lord, that your people humbly asking you for help. 
that your word will go forth and penetrate in the depth of their heart. For they are light. Everyone that has accepted you, everyone that has received Christ, has received light. So help them to shine, Father, hear their cry. They want to be used of you. They want to be a blessing to others through you, Lord. But some are stuck in their own world, in their own things. And they know it and they are feeling even the sorrow, but Lord, set everyone free who is crying out now that they want to be used, they want to bless you, and they want to be a blessing. Father, let these words go forth and never return to you void. Accomplish your purpose in every heart by these scriptures, for they are your words inspired by your spirit, delivered into our hearts. Oh, Lord Jesus, thank you for your humility. Thank you for your dedication to obey God and help each and every one of us to grow more and more obedient to every word that God speaks to us to every prompting of your Holy Spirit. And Lord, remember to grant us the grace of discernment. O oh, Father, that we may grow in the knowledge of you and in the fear of you, Lord. We all pray these things in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Beloved, I am so delighted that we could be together today. And I look forward to meet you next time, next Shabbat, before the living God. Until then, may you be blessed. May your family be blessed. May the brightness of God shine upon your face. May his countenance manifest his glory in you. And may he empower you by his Holy Spirit to worship him, to follow him, to obey him from this day forward and forevermore. Shalom.